continue our study of Paul's epistle to the Philippians, which we've entitled, Go for the Win. The need for victorious Christian living, of course, is always a reality, but especially in the trying times in which we find ourselves, we need to remember that in Jesus Christ, we always have a victory. We're going to be considering Philippians 2, verses 5 through 8, which I've entitled, Your Life Coach for Epic Success. Certainly, we want to be successful. We want to abound in the work of the Lord. And in doing this, we are able to look to the one who was successful beyond all others, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Through his example, we can find the key to living successfully in this world. We are to be disciples of the Master. The term disciple means a student, one who is trained, one who is following after an accomplished individual. And we are following after the Master, the one who is most accomplished of all. The Great Commission mentions this idea of discipleship Matthew 28, beginning in verse 18. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This commission was not only given to the disciples gathered around Jesus before his ascension, but rather it is given to them and through them to the church. We all enter into this commission. We are to make disciples. All authority, Jesus said, is given to me. And based on that, we are sent to make disciples. Notice, he says, make disciples, baptizing and teaching. The total commitment movement had a fundamental flaw in this, in that they viewed making disciples as being a prerequisite for baptizing and teaching. In other words, someone had to be discipled, and then they would be baptized. No, to be a disciple means to be baptized and then to be taught. Baptism is an entryway into a new relationship with Jesus Christ. That is where Jesus becomes your Lord in the sense that you are following him. Once you are baptized into Christ, you are to be taught. You don't have to go through a lengthy catechism a lengthy training in order to be baptized. If you're able to make the good confession that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, then you can be baptized into Christ. But that is a beginning. It's not over. It's just starting. It's always new. And we all are being trained. We're being trained by the Master. He says in Matthew eleven twenty-eight and 29, Come to me. All who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Look at that promise. We need rest. We are heavy laden by the cares of this world. He says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Learn from me or learn of me. That is to say, learn what Jesus has to teach. Not only through what he says, but perhaps more importantly, through his example, through what he is. Looking to Jesus, we can be trained, we can be guided, we can be his disciples. Philippians 2, beginning in verse 5, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Have this mind among yourselves. 
we are to have our minds conditioned. We are to learn what it is to be Christ-like by looking to Christ himself. Jesus is our perfect example. There's nowhere else where we can find the information that he provides. He is the incarnate God, so much so he says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. But he is also fully man. And as fully God and fully man, he serves as an example of what perfect humanity would be like. The incarnation is central to this understanding. Picking back up in verse 6 of Philippians 2, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. The mystery of Jesus being fully God and fully human, the mystery of the Incarnation, is one that we must affirm. We must never diminish his full humanity nor his full divinity. Jesus Christ is still fully human. On the road to Damascus, whenever Saul of Tarsus asked, Who are you, Lord? The Lord answered, I am Jesus. In the revelation which John received on the Isle of Patmos, Jesus identified himself by that name. He never stops being Jesus. He became man at the Incarnation, and that humanity stays with him. As he lived upon earth for about 30 years, and in his 30 years of public ministry, he lived out and showed us what it meant to be a perfect human being an example of humility. He emptied himself. He did not think that that which was divine was to be held on to, but he became fully human as well. Picking up in verse 8, And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. The humility and obedient faith of Jesus is an example we need to follow. Humility is the foundation for obedient faith because it is saying to God, you know what is best. That's what Jesus did when he was on this earth. He looked to his Father in heaven and did all that the Father told him to do. So it is, if we have faith, if we believe God, we will also be obedient. Grace is received through faith. Grace is conditional. Not everyone receives the grace of God, but everyone can, if they will, look to the Lord. Through Jesus Christ, whoever will come can come into this grace. But you must have faith. You must accept what the Lord has said. The power of humility is the power of salvation lived out in our lives. It is following the example of Jesus Christ. Humility, as we saw in our previous lesson, is also the foundation of unity. We can be bound together. And this unity causes us to be able to achieve more than we could ever achieve individually. Unity is the power to do more. Jesus Christ has shown us in his example of humble obedience, the obedience of faith, a way that we can be bound together in this truth. And as his disciples, we can live out the Great Commission in our lives and bring others into the kingdom. Your epic success rests upon the example of your life coach the one who guides you, the one who encourages you, Jesus Christ, our example, our teacher, our Savior. We should go for the win, live victoriously. As we continue to study the Epistle of Paul to the Philippians, we're going to see that it is Jesus Christ 
from beginning to end. Yeah.